Hello, this is the third video of the 18th chapter of the Crystal Clear Electronics Curriculum. Last time we showed you the circuit of the FTDI adapter and installed all the necessary software on our computer, so now we can begin programming the microcontroller. When we develop some new software, we often create a so-called Hello World program, which does nothing more than display the Hello World text to the user. Let's write such software for the microcontroller. First, create a new GCC C executable project in Atmel Studio called Hello World. At device selection, choose AT Mega 16A. Then, set the programmer type and parameters under project properties in the tool menu. We are using the ATML ICE debugger, so we select it from the drop down menu. The interface should be JTAG and the clock should be 200 kHz. The JTAG daisy chain should be disabled and the programmer should clear all flash memory. When that is done, it's good to check a few important settings that the microcontroller stores in the form of fuse bits. These settings are permanent and should be handled with care as you can adjust values such as processor frequency or enable individual debuggers. Open the fuses window under Tools, Device Programming. We won't go through the meaning of each bit now. The point is that you need the same settings as shown here. If you need to make any changes, press the program button after you have made the changes to apply them. After the settings, you can start writing the program. To get started, we get a minimal, almost empty main.c file generated by the development environment. This chapter already assumes that you have a basic knowledge of the C language. The code snippet must be clear. If not, then check our part 10 of this video series. When a microcontroller starts, it has an initial state. Therefore, the first step in any embedded program is initialization. This is a step where we set up the necessary parameters and prepare the ground for running our program. In the case of AVR microcontrollers, initially all port pins are configured as inputs and are logically low, additionally peripherals are disabled by default. Let's complete the main function. The unused pins should still be set as inputs until logical high level. This prevents them from floating. Connect the status LED to the very first pin on port A. This way, when the device is in the initialized state, the LED will light up. To do this, we need to set the DDRA register to 0x01 and the other DDR registers to 0x00 since we only want input lags on those. The port A, port B, port C, port D registers can all be 0xff since we want to pull all input pins up to a logic high signal level. If the code is executed with the start without debugging button or the control alt f5 key combination, and now I'm winking at David, then the late status LED should light up. Um, one sec, and the program is running, and it is done. That's right, we are very pleased. We managed to initialize the microcontroller. The next step is to configure the UART module for eight data bits and two stop bits, as we mentioned in the HTERM section. Fortunately, the microcontroller manufacturer also provides sample codes in the atmega 16 a datasheet for each functionality. In the USART chapter on page 146, the following code is provided for initialization. The source code can be understood from the comments. The UBRRH and UBRRL registers are used to set the communication speed, that is the baud rate. Then, we allow the UART peripheral to receive and transmit data by setting the RXEN and the TXEN bits of UCSRB to 1. Finally, the frame format is set in the UCSRC register. 
All we have to do is copy it into the source file of our hello world program before the main function and call the previously mentioned function with the correct value after io in it. The correct value can be seen on page 165 of the same datasheet. The UBRR value for 4800 baud with an 8 MHz clock frequency is 103. The source code should look something like this. In the top of the main.c file is the uart init function, and in the main function it is called with 103 after initializing the ports. The UART has already been initialized, but we cannot send any messages yet. Fortunately, the datasheet also contains a sample code which explains how to send something. That's right, you can find it on page 147. It's about the few lines you can see here. We wait in a while loop for any previous transmission to be completed. This is indicated by the microcontroller's UART peripheral, setting the UCSRA registers UDRE USART data register empty bit to 1. When the previous transmission is complete, the while loop is terminated, and then the data to be sent is inserted into the UDR register, causing the UART peripheral to start the transmission process in the background. Data refers to an 8 bit that is 1 byte value. A value from 0 to 255 can be put in an unsigned byte. Let's send the value 42 to the PC. The code will be changed as follows. Before the main function, we created the UART transmit function. In the main function, after initialization, we call this function with a parameter of 42, but before entering the infinite loop. Now that we have finished the software development, we will ask David to configure the HTERM application. After that, we will program the microcontroller with the new software to check if number 42 appears. Set up HTERM to wait for the data in decimal format and press connect. Then, all you have to do is program the microcontroller, as I see David is already doing it. The programming was successful, and the number 42 has appeared in HTERM. Brilliant! Now we can send numbers. Let's see how characters can be transferred through the communication channel. Let's try the capital H first, since this is the first letter of our Hello World text. There are several ways to encode characters. The simplest of these is the ASCII character table. It encodes the letters of the English alphabet in one byte and a lot of other punctuation marks and characters as well. The character table is available on the internet in many forms, you can find it by searching for the term ASCII table. Without giving a complete list, it is enough to know that the code of the capital H is 72. The only change we need to make in the source code is to call the URTT transmit function with 72 instead of 42. Of course, we also have to tell the HTERM application to interpret the incoming data as characters instead of decimal numbers. To do this, we need to change the encoding of incoming data in HTERM from decimal to ASC double I and delete any data we have received so far. So, David, don't hesitate. Let's compile the modified code and run it. Just a moment, the code is running. That's right, I saw a flash of light here, the programming is done. Yes, and in H term, the capital H has appeared in the received data. Well, it's fantastic. Then, the next thing to do is to send the entire hello world string. To do this, we will need a function that receives a C string that is an array of characters as a parameter and calls the UART transmit function for each character one by one. We should name the function UART transmit string. It will receive a car type array and will not have a return value. In C, character arrays are so called null terminated strings. This means that the last element is the null character which is an ASCII code of 0, but it is also written as backslash 0. Let's see what the C representation of the hello world string looks like. You can think of it as a one row chart. Each cell has its identification number. We call these indexes. You may notice that the hello world string consists of 12 characters, but the needed size of the array to store is 13, that is one more, 
because of the backslash zero character. It's also important to note that the numeration of array elements in C starts with zero. Let's see the implementation of the function. The UART transmit string function receives the string itself as a parameter. We create a local variable called iterator, which will keep track of which character in the string we are at. In other words, this will be the index of the array. Finally, a for loop will be used to go through the elements of the array, calling the UART transmit function with the current character at each step. The for loop continues until we reach the backslash zero character, the end of the string. David, David please insert the presented UART transmit string function into the source code and call it in the main function with the hello world argument before the infinite loop. I've already done this while you were explaining how it works. Oh, well done. Then all you have to do is click on the program button and you're ready to send the bits through the programmer. Whoops, there was a flash. And what can you see on the screen? The hello world message has appeared in hterm. We are delighted. Very well, then we can go on. We have successfully completed the task. Now we can send any string of characters to our computer from the microcontroller. In the upcoming video, we will reverse the direction. We will send data from the computer to the microcontroller, which will control an LED running light. Stay tuned. Bye. Bye.